putting the focus on Wyoming Cowboy football for the next few minutes. I'm Jared Anderson. Our guest on the phone tonight is a Wyoming Cowboy freshman who had a spectacular first game of his college career. He was recruited to play basketball, made the transition to play football instead. Aurora, Colorado native Austin Conway is with us. Conway is a kick and punt returner. He's also a wide receiver for the Pokes and just an all-around athlete for this team. You'll see a lot of Austin Conway this season and the next four years as part of the University of Wyoming football program. Austin, thanks so much for taking some time to join us tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, First of all, I want to back up to Saturday or I guess early Sunday morning after you guys beat Northern Illinois in triple overtime. What was the locker room like at 3 a.m.? For a 3 a.m. locker room, you would think guys would be dead. That (laughs) that locker room was live. Everyone was excited. Everyone was just enthusiastic about the win. Everyone was just congratulating each other. You know, we got the song saying. It, It was just a great thing to be a part of that night. What did you guys do during the delay? I know you kind of some of you at least came out there and worked out a little bit, and then went back into the locker room. What did you guys do to kill some time? You know, uh, in the locker room, we were just all I mean, everyone pretty much had their their game faces still on. Usually, guys have their pregame rituals. A lot of guys like to tune everyone out, listen to music. Some guys are just the guys that sit there and stare at the locker. I mean, everyone pretty much stayed focused in that way. Some of them were watching Alabama game, and we were all just doing different things to remain focused. Um, it was like, you know, being on a call. As soon as coach came in, we were ready to roll. Do you have a football pregame routine, and is it different at all than your basketball pregame routine? Uh, definitely. My football one, I definitely like to tune out the crowd, tune out everyone. I put on my uh, headphones, and, uh, you know, I, the best technology has improved nowadays, so I have headphones that just cancel out everything, and I just like to listen to music and can, uh, focus, just get my mind right for the game mentally. I know everybody's asking you about that return and the penalty on the play, but uh, did it feel good at least to to get one out of the way, returning it to the house? And I, I imagine it was pretty tough to look back and see the penalty flag too. I mean, it was it was great to have you know just to get in the end zone. Um, it's always a confidence builder when you get in the end zone. But for me to get in the end zone on the first time I uh, played a football game in two years, that was just. It, it just hit home. It was like, you know, this this is where I need to be. It was more ensuring that I made the right decision. And it was exciting, you know, just to have my teammates know that I, I did make the right decision and those guys support me. And they, I mean, it, it, it was, I needed, I needed that, to be honest with you. It was, like I said, it was ensuring. Is uh, being the return guy something you were comfortable with in fall camp? And kind of at what point did you know you were going to be one of the main return guys? Um. Yeah, it was definitely something I was comfortable with. I returned punts and kicks in high school, and as soon as I got on um, in the spring, coach had me, you know, catch punts to see if I could do it. Um, I actually didn't get any reps in the spring game, but this summer, you know, coach told me um, before we started fall camp that he was going to take a look at me, like a real good look at me, a punt returner. And, you know, I was just back there getting reps like everyone else, but what really set me apart was when we had our close scrimmage I made a couple of plays on the kickoff. I mean, on the kickoff on the punt return. And after that uh, day, um, it was kind of my job. Coach Coop had told me, hey, you're the, you're starting punt returner. You know, make good decisions. And I knew right away um, after about the second week of fall camp that I was going to be a starting punt returner. Uh, sorry for another basketball question, but I'm curious. What skills from basketball kind of translate over to football? And is there anything you did on the court that translates to the return game? Definitely. Um, when I played basketball, my best my my best asset to my game was being able to create in space or making guys in football. It'd be making guys miss, but in basketball, it'd be getting around defenders. That's one thing that I'm really good at is my change of direction. I've I've always been able to run in my endurance because of basketball. Playing, you know, high school 32 minutes a game, I don't really get tired. So when I shift to one side of the field and then reverse field. You know, that's something that I'm accustomed to. We, a lot of guys aren't used to it, but I have to win for it. So definitely basketball has overlapped in football. But even if I was playing basketball, you know, there's some things in the football field that overlap for basketball as well. Again, our guest tonight on Wyoming Sports Line, Austin Conway, freshman for the Wyoming Cowboys, return specialist slash wide receiver, was recruited to UW to play basketball, made the transition to football, and already excelled in that Northern Illinois game. Austin, game two coming up this Saturday, another big challenge against Nebraska. I know uh, you're just kind of getting into it this week, but what have you learned from uh, practice so far about the Cornhuskers? 
I just know that they don't have brown and gold on, and that's all that I look at it for. <laughs> they're not they're not my teammates. They're not guys that I grind with in the locker room. So you know they're the enemy. I mean I know they're a good program. I know Nebraska is a big name, but like I said, we're all looking at Nebraska as they don't have on brown and gold. So I thought we should keep it. You say you, uh, you you tune the crowd out a little bit, but that's a big stadium, a lot of folks to play in front of. Do you look forward to an opportunity like that or just kind of tune it out? Uh, I mean, especially looking forward to an opportunity like that. Um, I mean, who doesn't want to silence the crowd, especially as a as a team? You know, you get a win like that. I don't care how many fans they have. Every single fan will be silent. So that's an that's opportunity we would love to have is to silence the crowd. So even though, you know, you get the opportunity to play in front of a big crowd, and the biggest thing is – how are we going to silence that crowd? Uh, you tweeted about uh, Wyoming fans and the fans in particular that stuck around early in the morning. Is there anything you want to say to Pokes fans all across the state of Wyoming? Of course. Man. Our appreciation for the fans is endless. You know, I, I knew about the fan base before I even came to Wyoming. That was a big thing for me is how much they support and how behind they are of each program. I, I I'll go to battle with anyone to argue that Wyoming has some of the best fans across the country, some of the most loyal fans. You know, we have them everywhere. I mean, I was in Vegas and I was in Mississippi one time, and I found some people who were from Wyoming and went to Wyoming. So it just goes to show you how united we are as a nation of Wyoming, you know, graduates or Wyoming fans or Wyoming supporters. I mean, like I said, I, I will go to battle and say we have some of the best loyal fans in the country. Final question for you. Uh, how confident are you in this team kind of as a whole? I know you're just looking at Nebraska, but how confident are you that Wyoming can really turn some heads this season and this is going to be a special year? I'm definitely confident, especially um, after last night. You know, that first win is always something under your belt that you want. But we've been grinding together as a team all summer, all spring, so, like I said, that's that's been our, our motto is we're brown and gold. We're brothers. We all look at each other left and right. We want to go to battle for each other, and I think that's what got us through last night, and that will definitely get us through the season because we do play together. We do play on the selfish football, and once you put your team in front of the individual or put, you know, that saying there's no I in team, there's no I in us. I mean, there's – pretty much a solid team that really wants to win games and when you have a football team that wants to win games together that's that's a like positive attitude you can't stop that it's, re- it's really contagious and you can do a lot of special things with that i'm definitely and i know my teammates and everyone else is speak to say we're confident because we feel like we can win every game we play that's just how we play if you play for each other there's no reason you shouldn't feel like you can't win with your teammates absolutely austin congratulations again on the win thanks so much for the time and uh, hopefully we catch up again soon <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Thank you, sir. Again, that is Austin Conway, return specialist slash wide receiver for the Wyoming Cowboys and just a freshman all-around athlete. He's going to be a fun one to watch not only this year, but you got him for four more years, folks, fans. Wyoming and Nebraska coming up on Saturday. ESPN2 has the national TV coverage of this one. By the way, University of Wyoming is sold out of their ticket allotment for that one. Still some tickets available. I have to get those through the Nebraska website, but you can do that. Hopefully some brown and gold mixed in the stands with a whole lot of red at Lincoln Stadium this Saturday. Again, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. By the way las vegas odds depending on where you look have nebraska favored by 24 or 25 points so big favorites nebraska we'll see what the pokes can do on saturday coming up tomorrow on the show we have reached out to a couple of guests and we'll get somebody on to tell us about the corn husker as a beat writer or a radio broadcaster from lincoln on the way next we'll talk broncos and rockies